Okay, so I thought I would, you know, work with trucks on like my level of scaling and transport goods, but something is extremely wrong with this picture. Like, extremely wrong with this picture. <laughs> He's actually still driving in mid-air. Look at him. He's still thinking he's going to the bloody depot. All right, guys, welcome back to Satisfactory. It's been a couple of weeks since the last video. And one, it's been Christmas. Two, it's, I've, I've taken time off. And three, you saw the headache that I had at the beginning. Some of you think it might be fun. I'm not going to lie. At first, I thought it was fun. But then the logistics and the realism it was affecting the possible factory was going to be building in the future. My eyes opened quite widely to how problematic it could be. So let me show you how we got there. Well, first up, we know that we are bringing all this Caterium ore. We need to then put that into refineries, which are going to require water. But oh no, Bits does Bits fashion. He doesn't just want to build 18 water, you know, extractors down here in the ocean that's literally below him no what he wants to do he wants to basically go to the bottled water facility and bring it from over there to over here in bit style my style should i talk in third person or first but i don't know anyway you, you guys know what i'm on about but i want to bring bottled water from over there so instead of me like i said using 18 water extractors and placing them down there to bring pipes up here i've got to do the old-fashioned me way you know because i like a challenge and we played this game for too long and a lot of you still ask like even in every other episode like why are you still bringing bottled water in why not get water from because it's a challenge and oh boy was this whole truck thing a challenge yes it was it got delayed this video by about one to two weeks because i was having thing problems the collision stuff was going crazy and I couldn't bring the numbers in that I wanted to. So I'll get to that in a bit, little bit. But first, where the story, la well, the, fir the, the part, first part of this story starts is with coal. Yes, coal. Specifically, the ones over here in the Crater Lakes. Literally right here. And as you know, we've used this in the past for our coal power plant and all that kind of stuff. But now we need to extract this and then bring it down this cliff face right here and then throw it into a truck depot roughly around here. We will then build another highway on the side of this highway, which will flow in this direction, which at the end of here will hang a left. And what it will do, it will start attaching itself to the highway we've already constructed here and that will stay on a lower part because as you know i want to create different forms of levels in this area for transports and our logistics there's some belts from trucks to trains and because we've not done trucks in this series yet i thought we'll do it within this one but yeah anyway so we build a highway that goes across here and follows this highway along all the way until the water plant so it's going to be coming along this side on this straight which goes directly past where the factory is going to be getting um, created. But the whole purpose of this call is to take it down here, and like I said, to in front of the water plant, so then to reach about this destination right here, where the call will then get unloaded uh, into the truck station via the trucks that are going to be coming. So the trucks are going to be transporting coal while also being powered by coal and delivering the coal to this location where a belt will then go underneath the highway, which will then feed, I think it was 38 coal generators in this place. And then obviously all of them truck stations will get fed water bottles and 19 of them, 38, will receive the empty canisters that will be coming back from the Caterium plant on the opposite side of this. So then I want to build a highway that comes off from here, which is more than likely what you saw at the beginning of the video, and it will go onto a highway which will attach to this top section of this train highway. So it will stick to the side of it, it will follow it along here, and it will then make its way to underneath that train station over there where the Caterium is dropping off. We're then underneath this layer of foundation, we are going to put down another 38 um, truck stations. And you must be wondering why 38? That's because with all the Caterium, uh, that's because with all the Caterium we have over here, we need a total of 18.4 or 18.6 
um, Mark II pipes, which will feed into refineries, precisely around 25 refineries per each line. And the reason we need 38 is because we've got 19 trucks that are going to be dropping off uh, water bottles and then 19 trucks that are going to be picking up the empty canisters and delivering them back. But then I, I'm going to have to double them trucks. There's, so there's going to be a total of 76 trucks running along the line that along, comes along here, which will then pick up what it needs to work its way around the back side over there, around the back of that building to go and deliver and pick up the canisters or water bottles etc etc so hopefully you're with me right now and let's start the construction of this highway so first things first i've got the truck station down right here which you can see is bringing the coal in which comes from that which comes from that tower over there which is kind of oddly unfinished and looks a bit displeasing but that's where the coal's coming from i've then attached the foundation along here which goes along this highway and all it was simply doing is the curves which we've talked about in multiple episodes and just kind of attaching it on and then making sure that we can bring it around this corner which then heads down here into the direction i stated earlier and then we come around this corner and i've kind of created this little bit of a design here which is something a little different i wanted to kind of go with something like like i said a little different um and and what i've done is i've created these kind of like unique beams here that kind of go up here and attach to this highway to kind of make it one um and then if we head down here we have an inbound and an outbound road uh, and obviously i'm going to put the trucks on the left hand side because that's the correct cor correct the correct way of driving um because of all you people who wrongly drive on the right hand side uh, and we've got this walkway up here as well with just some um lights above it so you can run along this and then on the ground floor down here we've got these like beams which are kind of creating some kind of supportive structure and then we've also got these um barriers which are going through the center with some um display signs underneath which is casting the um, orange light up and kind of brings it underneath these and glows this. And it's better if I explain it when I take it to nighttime, which it makes it look better and things kind of pop. And I like how we can see the lights underneath or uh, that highway over here. And this kind of works. And I've obviously I've got these lights here on a uh, the nighttime mode with my usual color settings. If you're interested in this, there is the color uh, hex code right there in case you're interested. Um, and also, uh, here's the hex code for these lights because I've seen a few people asking for them now. So if we go into here, select the colors, go down to my orange, there's the hex code right there. So hashtag FA8A0D. Um, and yeah, there you go. Uh, so I've kind of worked out this right now and I thought it might be easier if I possibly put this into a blueprint. And after putting that down in an awkwardly weird position and we head over to the terminal over here, we can see I have uh, a few little... Uh, where are they? Where did I put them? They're not in here, are they? Oh my god, they are. I hate it when they kind of put them. Ignore all these ones. These are the ones that blueprint, uh, the, the blueprint showcase I did last time for Popcack, another content creator. But here's all the other ones. They're kind of all down here now. Two times four truck cramp, two times four road with no street lights. It's these ones. I need to organize them. Uh, three times highway with lights. Which ones are these ones? Wait, they're my supports support middle middle support oh my god they've even mixed my other ones up oh my god this game i swear it's so so let's load up the truck road with lights i've also got one without lights and this is what this looks like and i'm getting yeeted into the sky because like i said the game is terrible <laughs> we know this um but we've got a four by four grid on here everything kind of snaps and works together uh and i've also got it where it kind of all syncs together uh, so we can kind of snap these down like together so coming to think of it i should really delete this little bit of foundation right here and start working with the blueprints and then once we've deleted that i can just place down this wait i'm going to remove this end piece on i remove that end piece go back into my blueprints scroll down this chaotic piece of mess in here Go down here, four times four truck road with street lights. And then I'm going to aim literally in the middle, if it'll allow me. I'm going to lock it into place right on the uh, arrow keys. And then we have this right here. And then once I know it's all fine and dandy, I can then place that down. I can then press come out of that. Oh, come out of the menu. Um, and then Bean observes, make sure it's, everything's being constructed correctly like he's doing. If he stands up and gets a little excited, we know it's uh, it's all good, but it doesn't seem to be wanting to do that right now. We're then going to press, uh, go into the blueprint mode, copy that, make sure we are set to um, snap to blueprints, and then we're going to make sure the arrow 
is to the right hand side and then everything should kind of snap correctly and i could just start placing all of these down like so and then eventually i can just go to this side of the build and then just start snapping away well if i had the resources because i don't have any iron plates so i'm going to hitchhike on a train all the way to the desert starter base just so i can head to storage and grab any more items i need to grab for example more bloody iron plates and maybe just some more concrete just for good measure because concrete is always needed when it comes to highway building and then we're going to hitchhike onto another train to get back and then i could just spam the living daylights out of this blueprint so I can kind of get it built all the way up until this corner where then I've got to figure out how and how straight we want to kind of make it down there. But whilst this is being all built, you guys are probably wondering and 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 of us like plenty of times in other videos. Bits, how did you do the angled bloody pillars? Well, for these ones, they're not part of the blueprint because it makes no sense for me to add these to the blueprints because... For example, when I release this blueprint, you guys might not want these here. And the other thing we've got to think about as well is what if we're not going to be attaching to another highway? We're just going to have these floating little skeletons above here. So what I've been doing, uh, or how we uh, put these down, is we just go into the middle of the foundation like this. And then we're going to place it down in the middle. We're going to zoop this up three times. So it's like that. Actually, we only need it two times. And then to make this, what I would do now is I would copy this over. But because I need to build it fresh... What you do is you build to the side like this uh, and you're going to try and find out the angle you want. So you place it like this, like a little block, and then take it either up or down. And then you just use a whole control and change the middle mouse button. And then you place that in there like that. You create the angle you want and then just zoop that through, remove any excess pillars you don't want. And then Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt. But of, of, of course, this is wrong compared to the other ones. And then once you place one down, all you need to do is copy these ones. And how to do that is just get yourself a pillar. And you can see where this angle uh, starts here. We're going to grab ourselves a pillar. We're going to hold control again. And we're just going to line that up to there. So we can see the newly placed one is going to snap to the corner. Uh, to the sorry the end of that other pillar and we're going to do that just like that and then when we get to this place we know for a fact if we snap a pillar here make sure it snaps inside the other pillar which is this one right there we know for a fact that that's going to be the angle we need to make this uh, identical to the uh, other ones so what you want to do to make all the others is you're just going to grab this again and you're just going to zoop this all the way along like so and then use it as like a little uh template uh, and take it all the way to the end of the highway and do the same thing again so every two lights remove one place a bar uh, beam place a beam place a beam and, and and so on and so forth once that's done um you'll be all good and then that's how you kind of do them i'm probably gonna have to state this again in another video but who knows we'll, we'll see more than likely i will do so after some time later you can see i've now created the truck highway with the truck being in operation which is delivering the call to this location right here and then like i said before we're then going to grab the coal take it underneath the highway which will then lead to this area right here which as i stated there is now 38 um trucks stops which i'm pretty sure it's 38 so let me just double check before one of his pauses the video and counts and goes bits there's only 36 so there's nine and here's 10 because obviously it's one one further than that so that's 19 right there with 19 there which is gonna be 38 in total um with two trucks per stop each and the reason i want to do that is to make sure that each truck uh is at least one's over there and then one's over here that's the plan but also on this highway right here i've also got two trucks one truck here and the other truck is technically just going underneath the pillars over there which is he, he's on his way back now uh, to deliver the uh the uh the the the, 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 the uh, call I knew what words I wanted to say. But now that we've got these up, you can see the highway then goes around this corner and goes into there. And it's just the, the same thing we do in every single episode regarding curves, highways, and all that kind of stuff. I didn't want to bore you guys with it again. Uh, but I've kind of made this little rivet down here. We've, I've kind of showed this off in the past, but it works really well attaching to this other highway because obviously this is now part of this highway. There was a gap because obviously turning methods wouldn't allow a wider turn to keep this snapped without any gaps going between it 
and obviously I need, I've got all these to take care of here as well. And I've got some things not powered over there, which I'll need to sort out. Uh, and then all I've done is I've just got these little beams and I've just kept it at a place one down there and place one there and then bam, bam, bam. And did it every other one, including the, uh, the ramp here. So I got one here, placed it there first and then attached it to the ramp. And then I kind of did that all the way along. And it looks super nice, especially in the color we've done it, which is kind of like standard satisfactory orange. Uh, and it kind of just works with my color scheme throughout this whole entire save. But next thing, we need to start putting trucks down. I mean, one thing I am worried about all these truck stops is 38 truck stops is being powered by one coal line, which... I know for a fact that he's more than likely not going to work and we'll need to bring in more coal line and maybe even a second truck stop, which means four trucks on this line because we're only bringing one of them coals from that location in the um, the Crater Lakes. So I'm going to have to keep my eye on that um, and I know for a fact we'll have to change it. But I've automatically done a manifold line in here as well, which go to these first 19 lines. And then I need to make another one, which will create a splitter right there to go into the next 19. So I've got that to do also. So next up, we're going to go into our transport tab. I'm going to put down one single truck. We're just going to place it right there and it should automatically get filled with coal because I placed it in this uh, station right here, which it has done. And then what I'm going to do is I want to color it because it's, this one's going to be carrying water. So for just so you guys know, all the blue ones are going to be picking up the water bottles and all the gray ones are going to be picking up the empty canister. And oh boy, maybe I, I need to maybe think about what I want to do with these water bottles in the future because I feel like we're talking about water bottles in every bloody blinking bloody episode. And I've never said bloody two times like that after. Yeah, no, ignore me. I'm in a weird mood today. So what we're going to do inside the truck, we're going to click start recording. We're going to put Q again. We're going to hit F so it does a load. Once it uh, fills, we're just going to wait for that uh, grabber to go back. And we're just going to go like that. And then we're going to drive. So we want to try and keep this as consistent as possible to make sure that these nodes um, are going in where they need to go. So for those that have never worked with trucks before, it records the truck path but your truck always aims for the nodes that are it's dropping out. So it's, it's basically like pooping uh, nodes. So whatever node that uh, it, the, the triangle is going to be facing, the arrows we're facing, that's the truck's direction. So if I head left too much here now and it starts aiming that way, but I suddenly turn right, the truck will do a slow turn um, going down here. So this is um, truck station one we need to go to. As you can see, I've named all these stations here and we need to drop this off at truck station one. And then it kind of makes sense to kind of do all the others, right? What we don't want to do is get too close to these truck stop here. Otherwise, it will deliver it to the wrong station. So we want to keep as wide as possible and then bring this in just like this and then slowly drop off in this area right here. And I can already tell you now, when you work with trucks and a lot of people who have experience with trucks knows that these trucks are not going to follow these lines exactly because if you notice that little triangle behind us, that's going to make the truck probably crash into the truck stop, which we know this. We're then going to hang a left and we're going to go all the way around this highway, all the way around here. Yes, it is a floating highway right now. I don't know if this is going to be a full, a full uh, like a, a project we're going to keep, but I'm too far deep into this bloody project with these trucks to, to, to not release a video on it. Otherwise, you won't be getting another video for like another four weeks. We're then going to take this truck all the way back down here. We're going to take it behind this building. And remember, I do have plans to reuse this building. It's currently being used as a power plant. But I'm thinking about making this as my uh, plastic factory later down the line and start transporting a lot of fuel over here. Well, I said fuel, but plastic. Not fuel. Not plastic. No. Oil. Bring oil over here. That's what I meant. So we're going to bring the truck down here and we're coming back up. I still need to power them on, so I, I'll do that before we get finished here. We're then going to turn it left and we're going to keep it to the, the far outside if we can. Oh, that was a bit of a bit of oversteer right there. And then we're going to take it down here and then we're going to take it in to the end station. And we can see there's a little finish symbol. So we're just going to do that and pull it in. Bada bing, bada bosh. Route complete. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into here. I'm going to click save. Save that. And I'm going to name it 
water um, zero one. And as you can tell, we have an invalid path name. Check uh, check if the name already exists, which it does. So I called this water one because it's water one. So if you go into my folder here, you can see that I've already pre-done all of these. And what I mean by I've pre-done all these, we've got water one, water two, all the way up until the station 19 of the water collection. And on the right hand side, we can see the path of where it goes to and all that kind of good stuff. So what I did and why I did this without putting them down is because if I was to now let this uh, truck go onto that path, um, I'm when I'm recording the other paths to set the other lines up, I'm probably going to have collision issues and trucks will be in the way when I'm trying to record a path, which will mess that current recording up. So what I do is I save that recording, I then go back into here, I then uh, hide the path nodes, and then I delete the path. But remember, I have just saved it. So later down the line, I can go, okay, I want to put a truck in here and I want to load it on path number one, loaded, and that will take me from this location. So if we show the path nodes again, we can see it delivers to this stop right here because there's a pause right there. So we're going to, again, we're going to delete path, hide, uh, delete, oh, damn it, I've left the nodes on. Let me just load up this one again, load the path, then hide, and then delete. And then we're going to reverse this truck. We're then going to come into this station, and then we're going to record the water two path. Like I said, two represents this station now, because this is number two, and it will drop off at station two over there at the Caterium plant. And then we do that with every single one. And I'm not going to lie to you, this took approximately six hours on the live stream to record all of these truck routes. No joke, six hours. It was a pain in my ass. Once I've got all the recordings done and all that kind of good stuff, all I need to do is then I need to go into the truck. I then need to press Q. I need to load water one path. I then gonna load that path. And then I'm going to do uh, enable autopilot. But obviously, um, I will automatically um, get all these done as well. Because I've got water to 19 done. I still need to do empty to 19. Which I've already done in a kind of like pre-cooked save. But now we've got one truck down here. This should now be an autopilot, which it is. And then I'm going to grab another one. And I'm going to grab you. Make sure we paint this one blue because it's delivering water. Go inside here, load this one up, and then take that to water one, load path, and then enable autopilot as well. So that's that done. And then we do the same again. We then put this to two. I'm going to put that one to two as well. Hopefully there's enough to get filled in uh, in each of these. So it's not got coal yet. Has this one got coal? This one's got coal. So again, paint this one blue. We're then going to uh, enable autopilot. And then hopefully this one's got coal by now. Nope, I might have to re remove this one and place it back down after that one moves. Let's see if that helps. Nope, still not helped. So we're going to wait for that one to do. And then we're just going to do that with every single truck station here. And obviously, um, I've already done the, uh, the empty ones as well. It's just that I've not done it in this current save I've loaded right here. And then once everything's done, trucks are up and running, including the um, empty canister ones. We then have this, which gets a little problematic. And what I mean by problematic is this right here. And this is where trucks become a problem. And it gets a little crazy. And the only reason this is happening is because me as a pioneer... I'm, well, I'm in this location. So this is a problem with the game, but also because I'm in I'm in this location. So I'm going to show you how and why all this crashing and everything does this. Oh my god! But look at all them train the uh, trains trucks coming in there. That that's a little, little bit crazy. So what we're going to do right now is I'm going to position myself in this location and we're going to keep an eye on that truck that's coming towards us right now. And we're going to notice it's going to slow down just like it did. The one behind it is about to as well. And that is because the trucks are now in render range. When they are not in render range of the player, us, the pioneer, um, what they do is they keep onto the nodes. They actually snap to the nodes. So if we look in the back, we can see there's trucks kind of like going perfectly in sync with each other. Nobody's crashing. But if we look to our left, when another train comes and 
I say another train, but another truck. That one's just going backwards. I, he, he's just like, yeah, I don't know where I'm going. And now he's coming back to us. Okay, this this guy just wants to Tony Hawk grind all the way across this railing to get a combo and then decide to fly around the corner. But as you can see, they slowly become into render range, which means they also lose speed. And the ones that are coming from behind it are still coming at the, a faster rate, which means they're going to collide with the slowing ones. So think about real life traffic. When somebody slams on the brake, someone's going to ram them into the backside. And I don't mean that in a weird term, but you know what I mean. So whenever the trucks are out of render range, they are not a physical object, which means, oh my God, which means all of these won't crash. But when they start becoming into render range, you can see physics start to happen because we are too close to them. So this is only a problem when I'm here, as you can tell. Oh my God. And then some like to fly away because they just, they just don't give a shit. <laughs> but yeah, that is the problem with the trucks. They're not delivering any items right now, but I wanted to science this to see what it was going to be like, if it's going to work. And clearly it doesn't work. To some of you, it works, but not for me. I've got to make sure I provide enough water to that place over here. And everything that we've built in today's episode, I don't know why sometimes it just highly distract me. Um, but like all of this, all of this work, so everything that we built today, that coal, the extension of the highway, the blueprints, grabbing the coal to the stations over there, spending six hours programming all the trucks to do their routes, to build this highway, to come over to here, to then build this highway around here. And all I needed to do was to put 18.4 water extractors down. But hey, yo, my name is Bits and I don't do that kind of stuff. So make sure you check out my other content right here. And hopefully you enjoyed this video. It was a bit of a skippy one, but I appreciate it. And if you're interested as well, check out my second channel, which is on screen right now, if you're interested in daily content from myself. So thank you so much for watching. Keep smiling and I'll see you in another bloody video.